On today's show, the Clippers had a deal in place for Malcolm Brogdon that would send Marcus Morris Amir Coffey in the 30th pick in Thursday's draft to the Wizards, but it fell through. And Malcolm Brogdon will not be a Clipper. Marcus Morris is still a Clipper. Page, Paul George's name has been thrown around in rumors with the New York Knicks. The Clippers kept their picks. Going to be talking about it all on today's Locked On Clippers. You are Locked On Clippers, your daily Los Angeles Clippers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, sir. You are locking in with the Clips. Thank you for making Locked On Clippers the first listen of your day, your team, every day. I'm your host, Darren Viziri, born and raised in Los Angeles and entering my 19th season as a Clipper fan this fall. You can also follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at Dime Dropper Pod. And, of course, subscribe to my own YouTube channel, Dime Dropper, for even more L.A. Clipper, L.A. Sports, NBA, and NBA history content. And Locked On Clippers is free and available on all your favorite podcasting platforms, including YouTube, where I want you to tell me anything you know about the two picks that the Clippers made. That would be Kobe Brown at 30 and Jordan Miller at 48. Now, I didn't know much about these guys, but I did some digging, asked around, and I've got some for them in segment two going to be talking a little bit about the rumors surrounding Paul George uh, and if you could potentially be getting traded. It's not really hot, just kind of some new rumors today and then Russell Westbrook and how how big of a chance I think we have on bringing him back. But let's start out with the main topic. During the last episode on Wednesday, I, yeah, it was the Wednesday. No, it was the Thursday show. I was I reacted to the Malcolm Brogdon trade news in the middle of the episode. I got the notification during the episode that the Clippers were finalizing a deal or in serious talks. I think it was finalizing. It doesn't really matter, does it? Because it didn't happen. But to get Malcolm Brogdon and Marcus Morris, Amir Coffey, and the 30th pick in the draft to be going out the door. And by the way, this episode is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time is the best place to find the best deals on tickets last minute to any one of your favorite events. But so let's get back to it, right? When I heard the news about Brogdon, as you could tell from the episode, if you listened or watched, I was ecstatic. I've wanted Brogdon since last year. I thought it was a perfect fit. You know, I can go on and on and list Brogdon's positive qualities. But then later in the night, and another reason I was so happy about it, Marcus Morris off the books. Marcus Morris, who Ty Lue played past the point of him deserving to play, all season long, and it was really hurting the team, and it got to the point where Marcus was getting abused on social media and stuff, and I just felt bad for the guy. But from all the reports this season about him being disgruntled as well, I don't really feel that bad. He needed the sacrifice, and he wasn't really about it. But the tough part of the trade was giving up the 30th pick in Amir Coffey. But I figured getting Malcolm Brogdon, given that we don't know what's going to happen with Russ, was a good move. And look... That was my biggest fear when we got Brogdon for a brief second is what's going to happen with Russ because we've already exercised the option on Bones Highland. I made a mistake in the in the last episode. We have exercised our team option on Bones Highland, so he will be back next season, which I love. But I want him to be the backup point guard. So if Malcolm Brogdon was to come to the Clippers, then where does that leave Russ? I don't want Brogdon and Bones off the bench because I have Bones and Norman. We already have them coming off the bench next year. But later in the night, we had a little Chris Paul moment, 2011, and the trade was then void, fell through, and it was us, the Clippers, that backed out. And everybody, you know, that wanted the Clippers to make the trade were getting pissed, blaming the front office, what are they doing, they're idiots, all this stuff. And then we found out that the Clippers had serious concerns about Malcolm Brogdon's injury history. Now, Malcolm Brogdon missed 15 games last season, but he has missed a decent chunk of games in just about every single season besides his rookie season. Now, going into next season, it wasn't just the injury history that the Clippers feared. If you recall, 
towards the end of the Miami Heat Conference Final Series, Malcolm Brogdon had an elbow injury, and I'm hearing that he may need surgery for it. Now, if that's the case, I am absolutely content that the Clippers backed out of this deal because we don't need any more injury-prone guys. That's part of the reason why I didn't want Chris Paul. Well, I did say I wanted Chris Paul just for the sentimental value, but I did say it's not going to help us. So do I think that Malcolm Brogdon pulling out of the trade was a good idea? If it's true that he needs surgery, yes, it's a good idea. If we end up getting Russell Westbrook, yes, it's a good idea. The thing is, the Clippers were taking too long. We wanted Malcolm Brogdon's physical to go through and all this stuff. And the Celtics wanted to get a deal done by midnight. And they ended up getting a deal done, but it cost them Marcus Smart. Which made me think, could the Clippers have gotten Marcus Smart? But the Celtics gave up two first, I'm sorry, the Celtics received two first round picks from Memphis. And I don't think the Clippers are willing to part ways with any one of, any one of those, especially considering they gave up picks to Oklahoma City already in the Paul George trade. So I don't necessarily blame them for not going all in on Marcus Smart. Now, it is tough to see Malcolm Brogdon's not going to be a Clipper, but if it means we get Russ back, I'm okay with it. Now, there was a tweet. A lot of Celtics fans were complaining because they're, they love Marcus Smart. He's such a fan favorite, and they're blaming us now for the fact that he's no longer a Celtic because we backed out of the deal. Now, I saw a tweet from one of the Celtics beat writers. I think his name is Adams. Adams. <laughs> Adam Himmelsback. And he was talking about Malcolm Brogdon is going to maybe need the surgery. But there's a firm belief, I'm going to see if I can find his exact words, but he said there's a firm belief that he will be ready for next season. Here's the tweet, quote, per sources, the Clippers reversal on Brogdon was centered on not having time to complete a physical exam. It's still unclear whether Brogdon will need surgery on his forearm. So sorry, not elbow, forearm. But if he does, the belief is that he'll still be ready for the start of next season. The belief. Still not fully strong enough for me to buy. So, and that's a Celtic beat writer, by the way. I'm not saying he's lying or anything like that, but it's still a little risky. And plus, the Celtics are the ones that traded Isaiah Thomas with a bad hip, and he was never the same, and basically fleeced the Cavaliers. Even though Kyrie Irving didn't really end up panning out for Boston, they did improve that first season and were one game away from winning the East. So I honestly don't blame the Clippers. It was a roller coaster. We backed out of it. Let me know what you think. I did ask you to talk about what you know about the picks, but I'm also down to hear your thoughts on us pulling out of the Brogdon deal because I was getting excited. I was getting ready. I already had the visions of next season on opening night, clapping for Malcolm and making noise as he was introduced for the first time by Eric Smith, our public address announcer. It was already popping into my brain, but now – Those are no longer thoughts that I am thinking as Malcolm Brogdon remains a Celtic, Marcus Smart is a Grizzly, and Marcus Morris, Amir Coffey are still Clippers. And I want Marcus Morris gone, nothing personal, but we need to shed his salary and we need to get him off the team because he's not good enough to get rotation minutes anymore, but he is good enough to get rotation minutes somewhere else. But one thing that we did keep by not going through with the trade was the 30th pick in the draft and coming up going to be talking about the two Clipper selections Kobe Brown out of Missouri and Jordan Miller Miller out of the U of Miami going to be talking about those two the new Clippers coming up the best legwear around are bird dogs Bird dogs make you look good. And bird dog stretch khaki shorts are designed to fit slimmer through the thigh and leg, giving you a truly sculpted look, a sculpted look that you are comfortable rocking anywhere, whether it's the gym, at home, just chilling with your friends, don't matter. Bird dog shorts do the exact same thing as Lululemon, but fit way better. And they fit way better than regular shorts that are made of a stiff, restricting cotton because bird dogs fix the issue by inventing cloud knit fabric that looks just like khaki, but stretches so you get a way slimmer fit without having to sacrifice movement. Bird Dogs uses anti-stink sweat wicking fabric that keeps you cool and dry all day long. 
Go to birddogs.com slash locked on NBA for a free Yeti style tumbler with your order. That's birddogs.com slash locked on NBA for a free Yeti style tumbler. You won't want to take your bird dogs off. We promise you. Woo! 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 All right, so the Clippers did get to keep their picks, and the first pick they made was at 30, and that was Kobe Brown. Now, I'm not going to sit here and lie. I had no idea who he was, but I asked around, and I got a sense of who he was. Now, he measures at 6'7 and a half, 240, I believe they showed. That was either 235 or 240, so he is a heavy set, grown man. Also a four-year college player, so he's 23 years old. Now, there are a lot of people that are going to take jabs at the Clipper front office for getting an old player in the draft, given that the Clippers are already old. But the thing is, do the Clippers want someone that's going to contribute right away? Probably. Now, we don't really have the best track record for playing young players enough the last couple of years. Given how much or how little I should say Brandon Boston has played, Mayor Coffey, even Terrence Mann. So I don't know about Kobe Brown actually getting minutes this upcoming season. But here's what I do know that he improved majorly in his senior year as a shooter. Now, from what I was told, he was left open intentionally a lot to prove that he can shoot because he wasn't a good shooter before, but he improved. So if he can shoot the ball, three pointers, open shots, whatever it may be, jumpers, then he absolutely has a place on the Clippers and in the league. Because size-wise, he looks like he can post up and bully guys. And one thing that was a problem for the Clippers, when teams switched everything, which they often will, guys like Nico Batum, Robert Covington, they couldn't really take advantage of mismatches. Marcus Morris could, but Marcus Morris really isn't in our plans. And after a while, he started having a tough time really getting off the ground and getting clean looks. Hopefully, this guy, Kobe Brown, can take advantage of mismatches in smaller guys if teams switch and we use him as a screener. Now, the three ball, the size, that looks good. I also heard that he's an underrated passer. That, that That's one of the best parts of his game. And listen, being a good passer is always a great thing. I'm always happy to hear that. Now, there's a lot of things I don't know about him. Defensively, how he's going to adapt at the NBA level. And I think the biggest question for him is, can he play the power forward spot at the NBA level? Can he be the second tallest guy on the court? Because he's got the size, it looks like, but does he have the length and height? Because weight-wise, muscle, like strength-wise, he looks like he can play. But it's about the size to me and his lateral movement. Can he stay with wings in the NBA? That remains to be seen. However, I wouldn't rule out the possibility of Kobe Brown actually being the backup four for the Clippers next year. Because if they do get rid of two of the three power forwards, I quote, on the roster, Marcus Morris, Nicholas Batum, and Robert Covington, and they leave only one and don't get another one, and the only reason I don't think the Clippers would get another power forward is if they can't afford one or would have to give up too much to get one. If that's the case, and either Robert Covington or Nico Batum is our other power forward, then you might see Kobe Brown actually get regular minutes. But I don't think he really will. I think his best bet to get minutes is when someone's load managing or injured in the front court, so then he can come off the bench and give him some minutes. But we'll see. I mean, I think with them getting somebody at that size, a bigger forward, I think it shows that they may want to address that need, and the Clippers do need that. But the other player the Clippers picked, I was very satisfied with. I didn't know him much, but I do remember him from the University of Miami Hurricanes team that just made it to the final four in this year's NCAA tournament. And I remember, I think it was in the Elite Eight against Houston. He had a perfect game where he made like 12 out of 12 free throws and like seven out of seven from the field. He didn't miss a shot, Jordan Miller. And looking at his highlights, and check me if I'm wrong on this for guys that watched him more, but in the highlights, he looked so much like Amir Coffey. A lefty who's great around the rim, really good at turning the corner that you can use in like dribble handoff situations or coming off curls, 
really good getting to his strong left hand, good at using angles, good at using his body to cut off shot blockers, and athletic as well. I saw him taking advantage of a lot of smaller guards and forwards, and he had a nice little jump hook in the post. That's one thing I noticed about him is that he was usually in the dunker spot or inside the foul line when he was scoring. It didn't look like he was much of a three-point shooter, even though he did make a couple of threes in the highlights, but it looked like in those highlights they were leaving him open and giving him some room. But it looked like he was getting to the rim fairly easily and turning the corner really well. And if there's one thing the Clippers need, it's more guys that can get to the basket, finish around the basket, and are athletic. And it seems like he fits all those categories. So that's really good. And Dick Vitale, in one of the highlights that I was watching tonight, was raving about him. And one thing I noticed, he doesn't seem like he has much of a bag one-on-one. Like, he doesn't seem like he has that many counters or moves. But when he does go downhill and he does get cut off, and in a lot of the highlights, he was stopping his dribble and getting cut off. The good part about it is, even when he was getting cut off on the drive, he had his head up and he was making nice passes to cutters and finding the open man. So he clearly has some level of court vision. And I also think his footwork looked really good. He was methodical. He was finding angles and openings to get shots off the glass. And again, finishing with soft touch and getting to that strong left hand, he looked really good. And who does that remind me of? Amir Coffey. Let me know if you think of that compa- what you think of that comparison. Of course, I've watched Amir Coffey play for now three years in full games. I haven't seen uh, Jordan Miller play in that many full games. But let me know what you think because I really like this pick. I think he's going to spend a lot of time in the G League, as will Kobe Brown most likely. But I think there's potential there. Now, do I think he plays over Terrence Mann or Amir Coffey? Of course not. Do I think he plays over Brandon Boston? Of course not. But I'm not mad at the pick at all. I think he's a good player, and the one thing you got to really like is that he was on a winning college team, a team that was in this final four, so he's contributed to winning basketball, and he played heavy minutes. That is what cannot be disputed, but so let me know what you think of the picks. Give me any more context that you have, but coming up, what does all this mean for Russell Westbrook? Who has been ruled out of the Clippers sweepstakes based on a crazy move on Thursday? And then is there actual smoke with Paul George going elsewhere? Going to be tough. Well, actually, I already answered that in the last episode. But is there actual smoke with PG going to New York? And how do we feel about potential packages with the Knicks? Going to be talking about all that coming up. But before we do that, I got to tell you about game time. Buying tickets to your favorite events shouldn't be stressful. Game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater near you. With killer deals on last-minute tickets and their best price guarantee, you can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hyped for the fun you'll have. Forget planning months in advance. Game time has deals on tickets right up to the day of the event. Get exclusive flash deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. Get images of your seat before you buy so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONNBA for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code LOCKEDONNBA for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Let me tell you a little something about Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the best daily fantasy app on the market. It's not a betting app. You place entries against Prize Picks projections and not actually other people. And if you're confused on how that works, let me tell you. All you got to do is pick two to six players and predict if they will score more or less than their Prize Picks projection. You can win up to 25 times your money on any entry, and Prize Picks offers projections on any sport that you watch. That includes the NBA, the MLB, college football, and all others, the WNBA as well, and MLS. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's that easy. Safe and fast withdrawals and currently operational in over 30 states and Canada. Just download the PrizePix app or go to prizepix.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with the promo code Locked On. If you deposit $100, PrizePix will give you $100. If you deposit $50, Price Picks will give you $50. Don't forget, don't forget to enter the promo code locked on at sign up for an instant deposit match up to a hundred dollars. All right. So
So to close out the show, I saw a rumor about Paul George and the Knicks. The Knicks are expressing interest in getting him. And if I were the Knicks, I would absolutely do the same thing. But Obi Toppin, who would answer a lot of the Clippers' concerns at power forward, getting a younger, more athletic one. But Obi Toppin and R.J. Barrett for Paul George, I'm not too high on R.J. Barrett. I, I think that he's solid. I don't think he made a big enough improvement in year four, as I would expect. He, I don't think he was that much better in year four than year three. He had a pretty good playoffs, but he really struggles with shot creation and his jumper. That's the main thing. He struggles with shot creation. He's a solid defender, but nothing crazy. And his jumper's a little inconsistent. He's good at getting in the basket. Kind of like that Jordan Miller guy I was just talking about. But I just, he's not, he hasn't moved the needle for me. Paul George, that's a big player to part ways with for that. And I, I, I get it. Obi Toppin will help our team, but... Nah, I'm not high on that. I'd much rather get a lot more picks. Um, so I'm not entertaining that at all, and I don't think the Clippers will. And in the press conference after the draft, Lawrence Frank said we are committed to building around Kawhi and PG. And look, everybody can report these rumors all they want, but the evidence is that they tried to go after Malcolm Brogdon, which makes me know that they are trying to run it back with Paul George and Kawhi. Now, we talked about Chris Paul the last couple of days, and now that is... Reunion is officially not going to happen. CP3 traded on Thursday to the Golden State Warriors. Who in their right minds could have seen this one coming? CP3 and the Warriors, I wouldn't... What's the opposite of a match made in heaven? I mean, I think he could help the team a little bit. But CP3 is so ball dominant, stagnant, just stand around off the ball. The Warriors are so fluid in terms of their movement motion offense cp3 has never played an offense like that in the nba it's always been get the ball to chris paul run pick and rolls or take turns running them with someone else like james harden or devin booker i don't know how cp3 is going to fit with the warriors at all but the main thing is the clippers aren't going to get him and that's a good thing because if they were really adamant about the whole we don't want injured players damaged goods with brogdon thing then good don't get chris paul either if that's what you're worried about try to bring back russ now the question is i really don't know what Russ wants money-wise. I've heard that he wants to get paid, but then again, it's such a great opportunity to come back with the Clippers. We love him here. The team likes him. He helped the team. He helped the vibes. And, I mean, it seems like we need someone at that spot and we want someone durable and athletic and no one's better than Russ in that department. But I hope we get him. Lawrence Frank said, we're going to try to bring Russ back, but ultimately Russ is a free agent. Now, if he doesn't come back, then we're a little bit in trouble at that point guard spot. But I have a feeling we're going to get him back, guys. I don't know what it is, but I have a feeling that we're going to. No sources on that. I'm just hoping. Especially if, you know, the plan is to run it back. We need Russ, in my opinion. But no Chris Paul anymore. That's out. I would definitely don't want to trade Paul George to New York. That's for sure. But Scoot Henderson got taken by the Blazers. If they're willing to try to talk and get on the phone about Paul George for Scoot Henderson... I would absolutely entertain that conversation, especially going into the Intuit Dome. We get Scoot Henderson. We're set in terms of it looks having something to look forward to, but I don't think the Clippers are going to move Paul George. In conclusion, Malcolm Brogdon, not going to be a Clipper. We got Kobe Brown and Jordan Miller in the draft at 30 and 48. They are Clippers. PG, rumors about him potentially getting traded in New York. I wouldn't look too far into it. I wouldn't do it if I were in charge. Russell Westbrook, we'll just have to see what happens. Chris Paul will not be a Clipper. But let me know what you thought of the episode. Give me anything you know about Kobe Brown and Jordan Miller. And anything else you want to say, go ahead. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Dime Dropper Pod. Subscribe to my own YouTube channel, Dime Dropper, for even more LA Clipper, LA Sports, NBA, NBA history content. Locked on Clippers is free and available on all your favorite podcast platforms. Make sure to hit the notification bell so you know every single time we post a video. And make sure to leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. Why not? You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Dime Dropper Pod. The age-old proverb continues. Go Clippers.